Hi, I'm Keith Whitelock and welcome to Watercolor Workshop. Today I'm going to do a little waterfront scene in just a little bit of a different style and I hope you find it interesting. Now for this painting I have done another pencil sketch to indicate all the areas that I really want to cover. This painting is going to be a little bit different in that it's going to be a vignette. I'm really not going to paint everything out right to the edges. We're going to see the white paper around part of this painting when it's complete. And this will typify the kind of artwork one would do on the spot. I do occasionally do some plein air work and this is the kind of a color sketch we would do. It's going to be a fairly complete painting, but as I said, we're going to have a vignette and we're not going to get into every single detail. Now I've transferred this to the watercolor paper again, just trace the bare essentials. And we can begin anywhere we want, but this time I'm going to start with the boat and then work my way out rather like I would on the spot. The boat is my center of interest, so we'll cover that first. Okay, I mixed up a little bit of ultramarine blue and just a small amount of brown. And it's a good shady color for the side of the boat. come in a little closer and I'll take some of that same color that I just used for the shadow and immediately throw some of the reflection in. And again this is going to be rather quick the way we would work on the spot. When you do work on the spot you do have to work a little faster maybe a little less precisely but it does make you really focus on what are the essential parts of the painting and you really can't afford to fool around with a lot of details. This type of work can be considered a color study. There are times when you can start a painting like this on the spot and it can be considered a, a pre-sketch, if you will, for a, for a more detailed work at a later date. I'm going to want a few old crab pots here on the dock and rather than paint individual cages we're just going to block in the whole thing with a couple of layers of work. Now there are a bunch of grasses right behind the dock and the boat and we're going to use the grass comb with that real ragged edge to indicate most of that grass just kind of flipping up in front of the building. And I'll give it a, a little bit of an orientation as if the, the wind has been blowing most of that material off in one direction. have sort of a light green color for the house. A little bit unusual. But I do like this. It's not too dark. And it definitely adds a little color to this composition. And when we get to put the shadows on the house, it'll really give us that illusion of sunshine. And while the house is drying, I'm going to take just a little of my phthalo blue and go in with a flat brush, try and 
pick up a little more color in the water. Just using some little stylized scrubbing motions. Now I want to put the roof of the house in, so I'm going to go with a nice big flat brush, nice even wash. We'll angle that just a little bit so I can run the wash along. This is a small wash, but I want it to be even, so we keep the wet edge of the paint moving along from where I started heading towards the edge right where I want to go and if we slowly move that wet edge of paint along to right where we want to stop it will result in a really nice even watercolor wash. Not too wet, certainly not a dry brush effect. That doesn't seem to matter so much on some small areas, but there are larger areas where when you want a nice even wash it's really important to have enough paint mixed up to cover that entire area and just slowly and methodically work that wash along adding paint as needed until you get right to that edge and then just pull the brush away and leave it be until it's dry and you'll find you get a really nice even wash and we can come back a little later and add textures and while that dries I'm going to indicate all that I really want to indicate for a sky on this painting. Now I will get a little bigger flat brush and we'll take a very light wash of some phthalo blue and up in this sky area we'll just indicate where some clouds might be and just do a very loose wet little wash like this. The foliage will cover up the rest so we'll have a little darker green, a little darker than, than even this perhaps. But this will work as an initial wash. Now I had something happen here that I really don't want. It's called a backwash. Some of that shady side has now gotten into the roof. So I'll take a paper towel and just lift that away. And that's something I can correct a little later. Okay, we'll just zoom in a little, continue to work on the shadowy side of this building. And where I had that little back run, we'll just continue with this shadow. And we'll just add some texture to the roof a little later. Watercolor is a little more tricky than oils with regard to that. But not every little incident will cause you to have to start over. There are a lot of little watercolor correction techniques. I'm going to add a few window panes to this house. I'm going to use this little flat brush.
I'll wait on this little window here because this is still wet and I don't need that back run. And at this point we'll just keep developing the little shadows. And these dark shadows are really what make things pop out at you. We have to keep up the contrast. You can paint in a very soft style with watercolor, but you can also really get some strength in the colors and contrast as well. Now I'm still using the little flat brush and that will work really well for the overhang on this roof. Anytime you can, you should try to match the brush to the kind of object you're painting. It really will save you some steps. And we can use that same flat brush to start getting some shadows on this old dock. After painting in some broad areas, I keep thinking I want to get back in and put a few details on some things. Now, first I'll put a dark shadow on this chimney, and that will just be a good dark brown. So will really make that old chimney seem three-dimensional. And we'll just put a couple of the little tick marks in here and a good shadow, too, across the roof. And then on our boat, it's time to get some details on the windows. Now, I could use the square brush for this, or the flat brush but I just happen to have this one in hand. So that will work perfectly well for that. And with that nice dark color, I'll also come along and accent that edge of the roof. And we'll even indicate a couple of windows. Of course, this isn't a speed contest, but when you are working outdoors, seems like everything wants to change. The light's going to change on you as you work. Shadows will change. Sometimes the subject itself will change. I remember painting on site with a friend one time and he'd put a lot of time into working on the initial drawing of an old work boat and while he was in the midst of developing the painting, the owner of the boat came along, jumped in, started it up, and left. So there was my buddy with a half-complete painting, and the main subject had disappeared. So when you are outside, you do tend to work quick and take some shortcuts. And I think the shortcuts, to a degree, are, are good for you as a painter. They really do force you to cut to the chase, get just those essential elements in, and not really fool around with non-essentials. Now when it comes to the old dock, 
I will go back to the flat brush and use its its uh, fine edge to just indicate some of the old boards and the bulkheading. We'll just stipple along and let that pop them in. And then we need some shadows under the dock. For certain things like horizon lines and other places where I want to maintain a nice straight edge, I will very often turn this painting upside down. Get that line like I want it. Gives me a good tide mark. Drag that out over the hull of the boat. Gives me a little more contrast. Gives me the illusion of a little more sun. And I will also just zigzag that reflection down here a little more. And since the water likes to pick up all kinds of reflections, and we have a green building, and eventually we'll have some green leaves behind that, I will jump ahead and put a little of that expected green right in the water now. I know it will show up here in a few minutes. along with the brown reflections from the dock and the shadow underneath of the dock. And I could switch brushes, or I can just use the same brush that I'm using now, the flat, and use just the corner of it to bring a couple of these darker reflections down into the water where I want those. Now to add a few details on this boat, I just want to hit those places where the sun is going to give a few little cast shadows. And the boat has a little undercut here that I want to shadow. And while I'm on that shadowy, cool color, I might want to hit some of these old pilings just to give them a little dimension and we can pick up any dark color on the palette for example for a little few little tick marks here and there um, we'll come up with just a little hash a little script for the name of the boat and I do want a little more brown for dock
filings just to cause that cabin to be shaped better. And I mentioned we had some old crab pots on the dock. So I'll just use the flat brush to indicate some little boxy shapes and we'll let those dry. And as far as the roof goes, it's a little boring. It needs a little texture. So I'll take a little of this brown and we'll just pick up on the roof pretty much anywhere and add a little, just a little texture. I might want to put just a few more little wave indicators in the water. Contrast will help. Particularly back along the old dock, or the bulkhead, rather. This is actually a rather tight space in here, so for random weeds, I'll just take a little round brush that points nicely. This one happens to be a number two, and I'm actually going to be drawing a number of little weed shapes in with this. It is tough to get in here with a fan brush or something that would really paint in a lot of grass at once. So we'll just paint a few random weeds in like this. I'll use the little paper blocking trick for putting in more weeds behind the crab pots. I want to take it away. It's just what I want. And if this happened to be something like that good old Phragmitis grass with the tassels on the end, take another round brush. We'll just use a little dabbling motion and we'll just put some little tufts on the end of that phragmitis. Now it's time to get those bigger trees put in behind the house. So I've mixed up a little green with yellow ochre, touch thalo blue, and a little bit of burnt sienna to keep it from getting that what I call Crayola green. And this time I'm using a flat brush, a grass comb. Now I could use a fan brush or something, but we're going to jump in quick and just kind of indicate the top edges of these trees, these masses of foliage. And I'm almost using the brush as a dauber, so I really don't get a real hard, square, flat edge. The sun will be on the leaves over here, so as I work my way around, eventually they're going to get darker and darker. Maybe a little sun at the top of that tree. And we want the sunlight and the sky to peek through these leaf masses. We don't want them to be just super solid at this point. I'll still use the same brush, but now we'll kind of cut in underneath. And I don't care if it does creep. A little of that creep will be good. Especially on the back side of the leafy masses. 
that I'd consider to be in the shade. And I'll just work my way down to the house with that. And we'll just paint in right up close to the edge of the roof. I have to work quickly, but I don't have to really be too concerned or alarmed about this. And just reverse brush down into those weeds. Now I'll switch to a little round brush. Actually, it's the same little round brush I used for painting those little detailed weeds a few minutes ago. And now I can get right up close to the building if I want. And I'll do the same next to the chimney here. If I want, I can actually just stipple a few random leaf indicators in. And I like how that's going, but I think I'm going to let it dry down a little. This gives you an overall view now of what we have gotten so far. And we only need to tidy up a few little loose ends now. We're at the old picking edit stage. I mentioned about the crab pots. And I just want to outline some of the... I'll use this very tiny little brush. So we're just going to put a few little hash lines in here like the wire frames of the pots here and there. Just enough to add the illusion of some detail to those. And while I have the same dark color available, I might strengthen a couple of the shadows around the, the dock and indicate edges to some of the pilings behind the boat itself. Same way back here on this old bulkhead. And I want the bottom of the boat, that red bottom paint, to be a little a little more pronounced. Just a touch more. And I'll take a little bit of that red and put a few floats on those crab pots with that. And I'm also going to take a little dark brown of course, a lot of tree branches are actually more gray than brown, and get up in the trees, and I'm just going to put the indications of a few limbs here and there. Most of the limbs, of course, are completely hidden by the leaves, but just the notion of a few of those branches really helps complete that image of the old trees. So this is truly the picking at it time. If there are any other little reflections or details that I feel would help make it pop, we just give it a a good evaluation and add a few. 
because again this simulates being outside you'd get the essence of this painting finished and then move on there I think that gives you the illusion of what I was after and all it needs to finish it off is we'll just give it a little signature and that makes a good color sketch handy for a finished painting a much larger scale painting or it's good to go just like it is there hope you enjoyed today's demo I really enjoy vignette style painting and it really suits sketchbook style work join me again here on watercolor workshop on pack 14 I'm Keith Whitelock